are back on top. World champions for the 27th time. Welcome back to Championship Rounds. Had to come back and touch on the upcoming UFC 261 that happens this weekend. And yes, it's stacked to the brim. Not one, not two. Yes, three world title fights. And joining me, I have the one, the only, Originale. What's up, B? What's good, man? How you doing? Hey, man, I can't complain, can't complain. And as a fight fan, I am pumped for this weekend. How about you? I'm definitely excited. Um, Like you said, the three title fights is going to be awesome. I just got – we're off the heels of watching the press conference that just took place. We are recording this on Thursday. Should let the audience know. So, you know, weigh-ins will be tomorrow. I'm pumped for that. And I'm definitely pumped for Saturday. All righty. Hey, man, I'm just as equally pumped, and I can be bold enough to say I might be even more pumped. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and dive into this. We're going to be covering the main card, and that starts with the Lionheart, Anthony Smith, and he's going up against, have you heard of Jimmy fucking Crute? What you got on this one? I think it's a great fight, and it's a great way to kick off the show. Anthony Smith, you know, I mean, he, he's, he's been in a lot of fights, man. He's 34 and 16. Um, he did win his last fight. I believe it was a decision win. But, you know, he's fighting in this, like, up-and-comer. Like you said, Jim Crute, 12 and 1. Uh, he's won his last three. He's ready to get in there and uh, show that he's ready to have a top 10 fight. Well, I'm fucking sweating in here. Yeah, he's ready. He, he's wanting to get in there and show that he's ready for a top 10 fight. And he's fighting a guy in Anthony Smith who's fought for the world title, who's got victories over top competitors. So this is the type of fight that will definitely have the the matchmakers, the head honchos at the UFC looking to throw him in there with a top 10, top five guy. So do you see him getting past an Anthony Smith, who's been in many, many wars. He famously got his veneers or his his teeth jarred from his mouth by one Glover Teixeira. Well, I just want to make a correction here. Anthony Smith is ranked number six, so this is his top ten fight. (laughs) Damn. There you go. I mean, the guy, I mean, I think he won his last fight, but he's been taking some L's. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that he's still inside the top 10. But again, there's not a ton of names at 205 anymore. But do you see him, do you see him getting it done, though? Do you see Jim Crute getting it done? I do. I think he finishes him within two. And uh, I like Jimmy Crute because he has a Resident Evil tattoo on his chest. And uh, as a gamer, I do relate with that. And uh, I'm going with him, the up and comer. He's 25, like you said. He's young. This guy's got a bright future. 12 and 1. Let's go. Hey, man. I'm right there with you on this one. I got Jim Crute as well. Yes, Jim Crute lost to a Peruvian necktie to one Misha Serkinov. How often do you see a Peruvian necktie in MMA? Not a lot. So that was a crazy damn submission. I don't think Anthony Smith has those that set of tools in his I mean, at his disposal. Also, Anthony Smith's chin's been touched. He's war. He's war-worn, if you will. And Jimmy Crute coming in, 25 years of age, still got the fire, still young, still hungry. I got him getting it done, man. You got anything else to say about this one before we move on? I'm just – I think it's going to be a good, exciting fight, and expect there will be bloodshed. 
there will be bloodshed and count on it being Anthony Smith's. All right. That's true. Mo- moving on to the next fight here, a guy that we have had, you know, dialogue with on Twitter for years, you know, years ago, we got primetime Uriah Hall versus the All-American Chris Weidman. Now, before you before you weigh in on this one, Chris Weidman seems to think he's going to be the middleweight champion again. That's what he thinks. He says he's a bad matchup for Israel Adesanya. What do you say? Oh, he makes me laugh, you know, because you know he's got his dad's always in his corner. I, I think That's he's getting. Point. I think he's getting this advice from his dad because obviously he's suffering from early stages CTE. His brain's uh, mashed potatoes at this point. Uriah Hall, you're right. I've had run-ins with him on Twitter. Uh, we've went back and forth. I consider it jovial, just comedian. Uh, two men just sharing uh, jokes, you know, having a laugh. He would kick my head off, though. Let's not get twisted. And in this fight, I'm taking Uriah Hall in this fight against Chris Weidman. I think he's going to kick his head off, and he's going to make this guy go into the 12th century again. All right, let me touch on this again. I mean, the guy has reached the highest of highs. He's got the title defenses. He was the champion, but he's been getting knocked out left and right and defeated since then. He's definitely, his better days are behind him. However, he did have a decision win, I believe it was. I don't think he finished him. He might have even finished him with an arm triangle. Uh, Kelvin Gastelum, and I think that was in Long Island when that happened. He does. You don't think that against a guy like Uriah Hall, you don't think, uh, you know, who lost to Kelvin Gastelum in the boy back in the Ultimate Fighter because of wrestling, you don't think Chris Weidman's wrestling prowess will be able to get Uriah Hall to the canvas and control the fight for three rounds? You know, that's a good thing. I mean, if he can get him down, then yeah, but he's got to get him there first. I mean, Uriah Hall has great leg kicks. Um, I think that's the thing uh, might be the factor in this fight, are the leg kicks. Uh, Stop his mobility. Chris Weidman has been exposed. And let's be real, Chris Weidman's claim to fame was a freak accident against Anderson Silva. Okay, let's – well, and he did knock out Silva in the first fight, and Silva has been dog shit ever since. So, um, you know, say what you will tell end of his career i'm not impressed right nor as i'm not impressed either and and anderson silva for all the things he did in his career it wasn't gonna last forever he was gonna get beat eventually the man was you know 40 so all i'm saying is is that yes then he went on to defeat machida belfort all guys that are in the twilight years of their career so a guy like uriah hall who has a bunch of confidence coming in now I'm, I'm pulling up his record now because I know that he just knocked out Anderson in his, his last outing, I'm pretty sure. But before yeah. that, before that, he beat uh, Antonio Shoeface Carlos Jr. And uh, B. Von Lewis, a name that I don't know, won't know, but he still beat him. So he's on a three-fight win streak, all right? The only way I see Chris Weidman winning this fight is if he can implement his wrestling. When it comes to the striking, he is outclassed and just flat-out outmatched. Who do I got? Do I see Weidman doing this? It would be an upset. It would. I'm not saying that Uriah is some crazy favorite here, but he's looking a lot better than Chris Weidman. Mm. For the sake of betting, I'm not going to bet. So is there, any, <laughs> is, there, is there anything else you want to say about this fight before we move on? Um, no, let's move on. I was not talking to you, Siri. Okay. (laughs) Wow. Anyhow, she's wanting to be a part of the conversation. No. All right. Moving on to the title fights. You got the bullet, Valentina Shevchenko, who's looking like she's 10 years ahead of everybody in her division, versus Jessica Andrade, former strawweight champion. What do you got, B? What's your take on this? You know, I was really been impressed with Jessica Andrade. I mean, she's been when she fought Rose the last two times, she looked great in both fights. In fact, in the last fight, it was only a three round fight, and I felt that she was just getting started, and she was starting to land some heavy shots on Rose. Um, so, to me, going into this fight, you know, it's a great fight. Uh, Valentina, though, she is just on another level. She can wrestle, she can strike, she can star in movies, and she can dance a little if you haven't noticed from the end of her fights. I'm going with Valentina 
And you know what? I hope that sets up the super fight for the fight we're going to talk about a little later. All right. We are going to touch on that a little later. Listen, Jessica Andraj definitely looking great in the fight against Rose late. Rose, absolutely. She actually got out a little bit ahead uh, in the first and second round. But yes, she was fading. If that was a five round fight, I'm not confident Rose would have came away with it. But the first time they fought, Rose was definitely piecing her up and winning the fight, you know, by by every margin until she got slammed and lost. That's that's what MMA is about. But she's going up here against Valentina Shevchenko. Now, Andraj won the title off of that slam. And then she went into Wei Li's country and got absolutely blitzed and got out of there pretty quick. <laughs> who do you got? Who, as far as striking goes, you got Valentina or Wei Li. Where, where are you at on that? Oh, are we going to talk about that one? I mean, that's no, 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 no not, be... not yet, not yet, not yet. I'm just but saying. I see you're saying. As, okay. Yeah, as far as striking goes, because Andraj got taken out by Wei Li already via strikes. Yeah. Valentina is the best striker in women's MMA, damn near, almost. If if you want to put Amanda there, I understand. But Valentina is damn near the best striker in women's MMA. So who do you, do you have Wei Li striking up there with Valentina? I think it would be a close one. I'm not going to say Valentina is going to go in there and just wreck her because that's just not going to happen. It's going to be a competitive contest between two of the best. And, you know, that's what that's the fight I want to see. And I would take Valentina in that fight just because she has the wrestling. She has the grappling. She has the striking. And she's all proven. And she's beaten the best of the best, you know. So I'm hoping that fight happens because I want to see Valentina fight someone she can actually have a competition with. Right. I, I, I just look at it this way, bro. You know, you got to you got to And then we can move on to the next title fight. But I look at it like this. You got Jessica Andraj. She's a good fighter, great fighter. You know what I mean? She's former champion. But let's not forget, she was pieced up by Yoana Yunjacek. Pieced up. Like, mm -hmm. she got her ass beat. Let's not even sugarcoat it. Got that ass beat. Anyways. So then, Yoana goes up and fights uh, Valentina for the title. The fight was not close. Even You, you asked her, it was close, but it, no. So I know you can't do MMA math. I'm always saying that you can't do MMA math, but you got a bigger woman, a better striker with more tools in her toolbox. Come on, man. Valentina, I have all day. And if she gets her out of there, I'm not going to be surprised. What about you? No. And I'm just looking at Valentina's record. Her three losses two times to Amanda Nunes because there's not anyone beating her. And her, other, other, and her other loss was to Liz Carmouche, which she did get back. Um, later. So she avenged that loss. How um, early on was the Carmouche fight? Uh, it was very early. It was, her in fact, I think it might have been her first, uh, it wasn't even a UFC fight. It was outside of UFC. It was C3 fights, Red River Valley. Right. So probably the, the first person that she fought that actually has a, a wiki page. You know what I mean? In her career. So yeah. obviously she was very young on in her career. She got it back. She's only since lost to the champ twice, the GOAT. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, dude, like, you got anything else to touch on this? Because I've – Well, yeah, and those, two, and those two losses to Nunez were decisions. They weren't finishes. And we see what Amanda's been doing to girls out there. Like what she did to Cyborg. She won. Some people say she won. I don't. Some people. Yeah, there are some people. Yeah, some people say <laughs> I don't. It. But you can yeah, always say that in decisions, you know, sometimes. Sometimes they can go either way. You know, Diaz, Connor, you know, people say I mean, that was yeah. a close one. So Yeah, people say Reyes beat Jones. I don't. People say Gus beat him. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, so uh, I don't think Frankie beat BJ the first fight, but let's not go back that far. Let's go ahead and keep on, keep on topic. So we both got Valentina in that one, but – we're expecting a good fight, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be close. I don't think it's going to be one-sided. But if it is, it's going to be Valentina uh, landed something devastating. Because, you know, her reach is just so much. Uh, I mean, she has a three. Yeah, has about five-inch reach advantage, it looks like. So, I mean, she's going to be able to get her jab going. She's going to be able to get her kicks going. And if she has to go to the ground, she's very comfortable on the ground as well. So, she knows how to get back up. She's fought wrestlers. She fought, a like I said, Amanda Nunes. Very good grappler. So, like I said, I'm excited for all these fights. I'm really looking forward to this one. 
All right. Well, I'm just going to say one last thing because it is a bit of an X factor. Uh, we haven't spoke that great about Jessica Andrade. We haven't spoke that great about her, but I will say this. The woman is Brazilian. Brazilian women are the most dangerous women in mixed martial arts. The day most dangerous women in the world. The re the record uh the record shows that. Numbers don't lie. You saw what they did. An X factor in this is that Jessica actually started fighting at 135 because it was the only women's division the UFC offered. She has KOs, slams, victories in that division. She went down to straw weight. So she cut 20 extra uh, is it yeah. 20 pounds from 135 to 115 and became champion. And now she's going up to 125, fighting closer to her natural weight. That's That might be an X factor. But all right, moving along. We got the previously mentioned Zhang Weili, or Weili Zhang, and Thug Rose Nama Yunus. Take it away, B. This is going to be a great fight, and I just watched the little press conference. Like I said, I don't think you got a chance to check it out yet. But um, in that in that exchange between the two when they faced them off, I did notice Rose did look a little bigger than her. It only says she has a one-inch uh, height advantage, but she just looked like the bigger fighter. I'm talking like she's going to have the range. She has a three-and-a-half-inch reach advantage. Um, you know, look, she fought – who was the one that dethroned, dethroned – Joanna, it was Rose, and it she didn't Rose. do it once, and she beat her twice, right? Twice, twice. Okay, she beat her twice. She made her tap the strikes, and then she just outclassed her. Right. So Rose in this fight, um, I think she is an underdog, slight underdog, but I don't think she should be because of what she's done. I mean, Whaley, you know that fight. I th I thought she lost the fight to Joanna. If that tells you anything, it was a close fight, and yeah, Joanna looked like a space alien out of Men in Black. But, That's probably what lost her the fight, but go on. Right, but she I felt like she landed more strikes in each round. But, you know, it is what it is. She lost, and now she's the champ. So I'm real excited for this fight. She has only lost one fight. Whaley has only lost one fight. That says a lot. You know, she's going in here with a lot of hype. She looks really relaxed. Um, I don't see – she doesn't seem to be nervous or anything like that. So I'm excited. But the X factor, which I'm going to get into in the main event fight, is going to be the crowd 100% capacity first sporting event in history uh, to come back from COVID to do that. So here we are. I think that will be an X factor in this match. That is, that is a huge deal. That crowd adds not only to the pageantry, but the experience inside that cage. That's when the lights are the brightest, when it's a capacity crowd and all the pressures on, and this is a high stakes fight. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Wei Li Zhang's lost one fight in her career, her MMA debut. Okay. So she hasn't lost since her MMA debut. A lot of confidence going on. She's she's rattled off 21 US or 21 mixed martial arts victories since losing that fight and picked up some hardware along the way, too. But I'm I'm telling you this, Rose Nama Yunus came out of the, came into the ultimate fighter, made her way to the championship, lost to lost to uh uh fuck what's her name cookie monster what's her name oh now i'm spacing on two. Oh man wow and i and I, wow i don't want to i don't want to get no dead uh give much dead air on that we'll come back to that lost to the first the inaugural champion and then made a made her way through until she became champion until she was defeated by that slam has hasn't lost a fight okay so this is what i'm going to tell you what has beaten Rose? Rest. It was Carolina. Is who you're thinking of, right? Uh, let me see. I'll pull it up right here. It was no. It was uh oh, oh Carla Esparza. Carla Esparza. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me so let me correct myself here. So Rose came into the Ultimate Fighter, made her way to the championship. She lost in the finals to Carla Esparza who was actually invicted champion coming in and the favorite to win coming in, Carla was, by wrestling. Carla controlled her with wrestling is what happened. And then Rose beat Angela Hill, Paige Van Zant, Tisha Torres, which she that avenged her only loss other than Carla. And then she lost a split decision within a fight of the night to Carolina uh, Kowalkiewicz, who then fought for the title and lost to Joanna. But then she beat Michelle Watterson, Joanna, Joanna, lost to a slam, Jessica Andra Andrade, and avenged that loss. 
So the only loss she hasn't avenged is that Carolina fight and the Carla Esparza. And Carla is definitely not beating it right at this point. My point in saying this is the only thing that's beating Rose is wrestling. Does Whaley have that wrestling? Because Rose, how many times has Rose been outstruck? Rose is a striker. And she has submissions on the ground too. That's why she got slammed because she was going for, I think, a triangle. That's I'm just saying, like, I don't think Wei Li, for her berserker mentality, is going to outstrike Rose Namajunas. And I feel like if she comes blitzing in, she might get put to bed. What do you think? I look, it, it can go either way. It's hard to say one way or another when you have two of the goat, uh, great, great fighters in this division going right at it. I mean, to me, I'm going to give the edge to Rose because she has fault. I think uh, stiffer competition, you know, um, you want to twice in a row and finish her finishing her in the first fight, um, you know, and then avenging her loss to Jessica Andrade. So, um, like you said, she's the striker, but you know, let's not sleep on Wei Lee. She has devastating leg kicks. Um, her leg kicks are hard, um, and that could play a difference. You know, for a striker, you take out their legs; they have no power. They can't, but they can't place anything on that foot. Then they got to go to the wrestling, and then we'll then we'll see if Wei Lee can take the advantage on the ground. Check check this out. So, Wei Lee, and then we'll move on. Unless you have anything to touch on after this, mm-hmm. Wei Lee, Wei Lee's UFC career. Unanimous decision, Danielle Taylor. Submission, round one, Jessica Aguilar. Decision, Tisha Torres. Jessica Andrade, who won her belt and decided to fly over to China and and fight in her country, who was out of her out of her guild. TKO, knee and punches. And then Joanna Young Jacek, split decision. I I got Rose, bro. I got Rose. You got anything? You got anything else? Doug Rose, yeah, where and DC that, at? And that, and that fight with Joanna was close, and it could have went either way. And like I said, I think Joanna uh, won that fight, but her head did not uh, look not tell she, the same story. It yeah. did not tell the same. It didn't yeah. tell the same story. But yeah, none of those fights were close with Doug Rose. Not one of them. Right. So that's true. Anyway, that's MMA math. But like I said, I got Thug Rose. All right. Moving on to the main event, and Brandon, you can attest, my guy, a guy I've been riding with since day one, the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaru Usman versus Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, who I, who I also fuck with. What's your mm-hmm. take on this one? You know, I want you to lead the way on this one. I want right, to hear I, what you got to say. All right, Cause, yeah, because you I'll said it's your things. boy, right? And it's true. Yeah. You have rode yeah. with him, but maybe you didn't know. I rode with the super necessary Miami's own Jorge Masvidal since the Kimbo days. So let's go. I want to hear what you guys say. Right on, right on. Hey, I'm gonna say this, bro. You know, I keep my receipts. Hey, I was riding with Jorge Masvidal too for a long time. You know what I mean? I I picked him when Donald Cowboy Cerrone was hot, and he went in there with Jorge Masvidal. You know what I mean? I picked him to win, and he knocked him out twice in that fight. But let's not go there. Let's not try to do a pissing contest on on fandom. You know what I mean? Let, I will lead the dance. You want me to lead the dance? I'm going to lead. All right, so Kamaru Usman, I'm just going to go out and say it. The elephant in the room. The longest winning streak in UFC welterweight history. Undefeated in the UFC. Nobody has won I mean, if you want to say Colby, I understand, but nobody has dominated and imposed their will on this man in his entire UFC run. He's already fought Masvidal. Okay, yeah, Masvidal had to cut a lot of weight. He came in on short notice. Okay, it is what it is. Nate Diaz came in on short notice and and strangled Conor McGregor. But let's not go there. All I'm saying is, is that yeah, the men Diaz have already to... got the men have a feel for each other already. They know what they feel like in the clinch. They know what their punches feel like. You can say Jorge came in and he had a, a weight cut, and that's all true. That's all facts. But in that first round, he had pop on his punches. It might have faded a lot quicker than it would if he would have had a full camp. But in that first round, he had pop. Kamaru Usman was not 
in danger the entire fight. He he imposed his will the entire fight. He controlled where the fight took place. And short of a few, uh, you know, gadgets, gadgets here and there, I see the same shit happening this weekend. So you wanted me to lead. I'm calling it. And still. What you got? <laughs> well, you know, it's easy to say, oh, you know, eight day notice Nate Diaz, who had to cut no weight, by the way, whereas uh, my boy Jorge had to cut 20 pounds in eight days. And he did for the title weight to make title weight and to uh, fight in that fight where, yes, of course, your boy Snoozman, you know, that's what I like to call him because he's a decision man. Look at it. Look at he his. Finished, uh, he finished your boy. He finished your boy. Where you at, Kobe? Yeah, well, you know, it is what it is on that one. But uh, that was the only fight that he's been in danger. You said he was never in danger. And he did lose some rounds in that fight. So uh, that's an, that, that, you know, Colby's waiting in the wings for these guys. The, the winner of this, he gets the winner of this fight. So we'll be able to talk about that as well when the time comes. But Jorge Masvidal in that fight, eight, eight days notice, 20-pound weight cut, didn't look hurt not one time. He was not in danger in one time in that fight. Not one time. Usman would take him down, and he was just holding there. He wasn't landing no devastating punches. He wasn't uh, cutting him up. You know what I mean? There was not even a cut. Who had the broken nose? Who got the fight with the broken nose? I believe that was Usman. All right? Allegedly. And like I said, I, wa I watched the, the press conference just now before we started this, and the crowd was going crazy for Jorge Masvidal because they are in the home state of Florida. So um, that's what I want to touch on. The crowd is going to make a difference in this one. They are going to be super jacked up, not only just to be there experiencing a sports event for the first time in over a year. They're going to be in support of the home team, Jorge Masvidal, which I am going to call it now. He's going to knock out Usman. He's going to knock him out. So bet the bag. He's the underdog. Plus 400. Let's go. All right. That's a bold prediction, sir. I mean, the crowd is going to play a factor here. Yes, but they are going to be booing most in part because Jorge is going to be on his damn back. What did Justin Gaethje say? If one man can hold me down, two men can rape me. He's getting raped. I'm just saying it's, <laughs> hap it's happening. Did He's he right. say that for real? He did say it. You can, yeah, it's, well it's well documented. So oh, That's a so, great quote. <laughs> right, right. So all I'm saying is, is that Usman, who controls where the fight takes place in all of his fights, is going to get the damn job done. What What is Jorge's Achilles heel? When guys strike with him, he wins. When they wrestle him, he loses. It's no, it's no secret here. Okay, the cat is out of the damn bag. You got one of the best to do it, wrestling. The longest winning streak in, in UFC welterweight history. And what Dana White recently called the GOAT. Yeah, the goat that can't even get five hundred thousand buys. Is that is that what we're is that what we measure measure uh, goat status on? Hey, I'm just saying, if you can't put butts in the seats, man, what's the point? Why are you out there getting beat up for? Hey, they're still getting paid. It might be peanuts compared to what the big what the big oh, boys get. It'd but... be a big payday because he's going against the guy that brings in the money. You know, because he's the money fight. There's a reason why he called him out again. He probably didn't know when he called him out for the second fight that there would be fans, but now we're going to have, you know, bigger payday for that. So, look, I'm excited for this fight, man. I'm excited for this card. But Jorge Masvidal, I believe what he says. He says he's going to avenge the loss. He's gonna, he needed the camp. The camp made a difference. Cutting weight, 20 pounds in eight days makes a difference. I can't even lose two pounds, bro. So I can't imagine losing 20 in eight days and then going and fight. And not only that, he went five rounds with the guy, and he didn't get finished. So let's let's see what happens uh, Saturday night. Hey, it's definitely going to be interesting, man. I've came I've came from I've came a long way with Kamara Usman. He's done a lot of great things, and one thing he hasn't done has been defeated. So why would I go against him now? All I can say is this. You saw what he just did to Gilbert Burns. All right? And Gilbert Burns definitely tagged him. Adversity in that fight. He had the championship medal. He came through. Kamaru Usman all day. 
you got anything else to say before we yeah. say a couple things about one more thing or or else or uh, or, or or whatever? Gilbert Burns isn't Jorge Masvidal, and no, he's not. Uh, he doesn't lay on his back and let a guy just lay on him. He tries to get up at least. Gilbert Burns didn't even try to get up. He gave fair. up in that fight. That's why it was TKO punches. That's fair. That's fair. In the third round. <laughs> All right. All right. So that is UFC 261 happening this weekend on Saturday night. Weigh-ins tomorrow. I'll probably release this tomorrow, but weigh-ins tomorrow. Uh, There's just one more thing you want to talk about. Actually, two. The first being the super fight between uh, Valentina Shevchenko and Wei Li Zhang if it was to happen. Who would you have in that fight? Well, we or already talked. Yeah, let's just, just say the let's just say the winner, Valentina versus Rose. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, that's an interesting fight too. Um, I think it'd be a good fight, but uh, I still am going to take Valentina. Valentina, to me, her striking is on another level. It's precise. It's is she she knows. I mean, she, her combos, man. She can kick you in the leg and spin kick you in the head within like a snap of the fingers. You wouldn't even see it coming. She's fast. Um, and, and her wrestling, man, she can take you down and hold you there and have her will. I think she could easily take down Rose and keep her there. Um, not a doubt in my mind. So you're asking me, I'm taking Valentina in that one just based on the fact that she is just a badass. All right. You're right. We already pretty much just talked about that. Other than, other than you know, the go to Amanda Nunes. There's, There's nobody that can fight her, man. There's nobody that can beat Amanda. Let's just face facts. Right. Who's going right. to beat her? Juliana Pena is going to get smacked because that's her next fight. She's going to get smacked. Easy payday, but, uh, right? That's just keeping the brand strong. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like we equivalent, Definitely. like we talk about wrestling. It's a job match, a squash match. This is <laughs> like She didn't even get an entrance. She's just already in the octagon. You know what I mean? Wow. Type shit. Wow, they 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 cut to it when they're just announcing Amanda, and then they say, "All right, look, come on, look, come on, bring it." <laughs> All right, now, hook them up. All right, now. <laughs> hey, I think what we should. Oh uh, yeah, do it now. <laughs> All right. Or he's just showing the heart. Whatever happened, to my boy Mario Yamazake. I miss him. He used to put the heart up. <laughs> Bro, Dana White took a king size dump on him. Anyhow. <laughs> One more thing, and then let's get out of here. Hey, Ben Askren just got knocked out by Jake Paul. Now Jake Paul is calling out DC, saying, I'll beat the fuck out of your fat ass too. His Jalen, his, his, his trainer, uh, Jalen Love, I think his name is, something like that, talking shit to, to Woodley. Then Woodley comes back and says, if he wants to fight me, he's going to have to meet me in the cage. And he's trying to fight, he's trying to fight Jake as well, Nate Diaz. What, what's your take on all this, bro, before we get out of here? I mean, we talked about it privately about Ben Askren. I knew what was going to happen. You know what I mean? I did like, not. Man, and look, it looked like a devastating punch, but it could have been a work. You know, it, it just uh, – that, that whole event was so weird. Like, all the performances, like, all the music performances, it was like watching a concert. I mean, it wasn't even really like watching boxing, really. Right. Um, it was too much, but – um, I want to see. Yeah, he went, my problem that I'm having with this is like Ben Askren's like representing the MMA community, right? You know, it's like it's like if 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 it was pro wrestling back in the day, and we're gonna send a a, a, a guy to fight a pro boxer, we're gonna send Bart Gunn. You know what I mean? All like, right. well, why are we not sending the Undertaker or something? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, why don't we send Nate Diaz? Nate Diaz beat the brakes off that boy. For I can facts. Jorge Masvidal would beat the brakes off that boy. Look, oh, this is what I'm goodness. saying. You, you got Ben Askren, who's not a boxer. He's a, a an Olympian, a wrestler. You know what I mean? That's what that's his bread and butter wrestling, not striking. All right. I just thought that look, he's a championship competitor. I didn't know he had a hip replacement. I, I you know, I had no idea of that. But I didn't take into account either that the fight was at 191 pounds. Ben Askren. In his prime, he went undefeated in Bellator and won and fought his entire career at 170 pounds. You got a bloated 190 pound Ben Askren who's never bought, who is not known for striking. Like, I didn't take all this into account. So I thought he was going to win. I'm not going to lie. He did not win. 
You say you say it could be a work. Okay, I'll give you that. But I'd like to think the integrity of Ben Askren, and he's already came out and said that it wasn't a work. But of course, he's not going to say it is a work if it is. But anyways, I just think his integrity level would should cancel out all the the chatter about it being a work. Anything else you want to say about this? Who do you think he fights next? <clears throat> Look, I'll touch on that. Uh, I thought Frank Mir looked better than uh, than uh, Ben Askren, if that tells you anything. But right. um, yeah, let's get him. Let's get a real and representative he an actual boxer. It, absolutely, a former champion. Let's yeah. get a real right. representative of the MMA community out there. Like, let's get someone that I can actually like. Got hands. Like, okay, let's do Nate Diaz. Hey, that would be a great comeback fight for our boy Nate Diaz. Throw him out there. He'll piece Jake Paul up inside of I got, three. I got one better. I got one better. All right. Connor McGregor. Connor. Okay. Everyone wants to say Connor, but Connor's, you know, he's he's in a in a battle right now, dude. If he doesn't win this next fight with Poirier, his brand's gonna be heavily, heavily uh diminished. All the I more think. reason all the more reason why he would fight a Jake Paul. Yeah, but he needs to do because it. Because if he uh, because if he beats Poirier, he's definitely fighting either Chandler or or uh, Oliveira. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't like I hope Oliveira gets beat just because I, I don't know, man. What he did to Tony Ferguson, like and I thought like, okay, Tony Ferguson gets taken down. He's got all them wicked submissions, weird things, right. you know. Been training with uh uh Eddie Bravo over there at 10th Planet. No. The man got manhandled. That was a different sickening. level. It that was, was sickening. a different level. That was a different level of jujitsu. You know, Eddie Eddie Bravo's tenth planet or his EBI EBI tournament. It's there's some there's some great uh, grapplers there. There's some great grapplers, but there's other bigger tournaments that are full of great grapplers, not just some great grapplers. But you're right. Tony Ferguson definitely has the elbows and the submissions off his back, but Oliveira's just got a whole different level of submissions, of grappling, of jujitsu, and that's why he's got the most submission victories in UFC fucking history. It's no secret. So, well, I, I kind of lost my place on that, but yeah. So we we were definitely talking about Connor's next fight or Jake Paul's next fight rather. And I just said if it was Connor, if I just think if it was Connor, wow, everything's going off on me. I just think if it was Connor. That fight would be fucking humongous and do and do hella numbers. And that's exactly the type of thing I think Dana would probably sign up for. Well, I mean, say what you want. I think they did 1.5 million on that on this one. That's what they say. I mean, that was with Ben Askren. Imagine if you get Connor in there. You're talking, I'm th- I'd say 20 million, 25, maybe more. Who knows? Could be. Could maybe be. I'm talking out my ass. That sounds way too big. I don't you just never know. I don't know, really. man. I don't know. I think that fight would definitely grab the attention of of all the casuals, people that don't even give a a fuck. I think they'd be like, what's going on? What's everybody talking about? I think that word of mouth would take over so much that that fight would be the... And and it's crazy for me to say, but if that were to happen, that fight would be, numbers-wise, the biggest fight to ever occur. You want to know how to get that fight? Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You know what Jake Paul needs to do to get that fight? If, if he really if Jake, wants that fight, let me let me let me Jake, say, if he wants that fight so bad, you know what he's got to do? What's that? He's got to go get the goat. You know who I'm talking about? The Hammer. I, I just Mark, blanked on his name. <laughs> Mark Coleman? No, not Mark Coleman. <laughs> oh, I'm of, the Godfather oh. of Ground and Pound. <laughs> I'm. St- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him. No. What I'm thinking of, who was the guy that Khabib smacked and Connor went nuts? Greg the Hammer Artem. Valentine. No. <laughs> yeah, you're re- Artem, Lo- Artem Lobov. Artem Lobov. Okay, go, go find Artem. Say, hey, come out to dinner, Artem. Come on. You know, I mean, it's Jake Paul. He does YouTube. He could film it. Come on, Artem. And he gets him, and he smacks the shit out of him right on camera, wow. puts it on YouTube. And then he says, Connor, do something about it. You know? Do, do something. something about it. I mean, hey, you want the fight? That's what you got to do. Khabib did it. Look what Connor did. He brought forty people from Ireland and threw fucking dollies at a bus. I think Scared Rose Donna Muniz. I think he was. I think he was high on the booger sugar, though. 
but that's that hasn't been proven. You know, well, he didn't I wish turn, he'd he get back turn, on it. He didn't turn himself in until later, so we we don't know what he was on. But <laughs> you said you wish he would get back on it. Yeah, hey, because that was the best Connor man. It, it just I miss I miss that excitement uh, that you never know what's going to happen. The build between him and Nate Diaz part two was the best build ever, dude. I loved it. I'm just going to close it out by saying this. You mentioned Nate Diaz. That's that's exactly what uh, that's that's exactly who is who, who, who Masvidal is going to be fighting next. And uh, also before before we get out of here, I'm going to say one more thing as well. Conor McGregor. Beats Dustin Poirier. You got anything else before I let you go? Say that one more time. Conor McGregor defeats Dustin the Diamond Poirier and, and wins say, the rubber match. And say it for the people in the back. No. All right. So <laughs> come on. <laughs> come on. Uh, for, the, for the for the people in the back, for the people in the high rise, Conor McGregor defeats Dustin Poirier. Mm. Is that good? That's good. I like it. And it's true. It's damn true. All right. That's what's up. B, you got anything else to add before we get out of here? Nope. I hope to do it again. Hopefully we can uh, have like a follow-up show. We can uh, do like a little recap. Oh, oh, definitely. 100%. Hey, man. Thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure. And for you guys watching, I've had it with you. Get out of here. Stay frosty.